More men are staying single by choice in America. Shocking new Pew Research data showing a third of young men are unattached and could stay that way. America's crisis of loneliness appears to be growing. Here to talk about it and what to do about it, board-certified clinical psychologist and associate professor of Toro College of Osteopathic Medicine, Dr. Jeffrey Gardier. Doctor, uh, thank you uh, for being here. Welcome back to the thank show. You, Tom. The thank numbers you. are pretty staggering. Uh, men yeah. in their 20s more likely than women um, of the same age to be romantically uninvolved. But between 18 and 20, between 18 and 30, over 60 percent uh, of men are romantically uninvolved. Many even have very few, if any, friends. Uh, the researchers uh, and, and other folks have cited digital addictions like online pornography as a major cause. Uh, why do you think we're seeing this? Well, it may be a little bit of that, Tom, but I think the other thing is that um, we're finding that a lot of these males are getting a lot of their needs met uh, at home, meaning watching social media, watching some of that pornography, uh, but also, as you talked about, having less friends. They're less social people. Tom, if you know a lot of teenagers, a lot of young men, uh, they'd rather stay home and play Dungeons and Dragon and uh, playing other video games and so on, uh, a lot of video addictions and uh, th th that sort of thing going yeah. on, than actually going out and hanging out and interacting with other people, whereas yeah. you may see younger women uh, or women in general really enjoy their sister friends being out with other women and enjoying that time. Yeah. Why, though, you know, it, we're, we're supposed to be social social animals, right? We're not intended to be to be solitary. The numbers got much worse uh, in the research by about 10 percent uh, for guys in particular after the covid lockdowns. Um, a lot of people were shocked by the recent suicide statistics among young people. That's but right. if they're increasingly isolated, none of this really should be a surprise. No, not at all. Uh, and we saw you're absolutely right, Tom, that uh, during covid, um, it was very difficult for all people. We saw uh, higher levels of anxiety, depression, PTSD. The suicide rates, Tom, that you talked about uh, and suicidal ideation rates have actually gone up. But the thing that we have to be mindful of, of is that males are not usually socialized to be able to talk about their feelings, talk about their emotions. So whereas women perhaps may have sought more of uh, therapy, connecting with one another, we, uh, whether online or in person, we saw that males really drew themselves inward. Uh, they spent much more time yeah. alone, and that trend continued till yeah. today. Yeah, doctor, so, so what do we do about this generally? And, and, and if you know somebody who's alone or you suspect is, is impacted like this, where they, they, they don't want to be social, they want to be very, very inward and by themselves, how do you approach that with that individual? Um, f great question. First and foremost, don't let this be the new normal. I know we all have a new normal now since the pandemic, but draw them out, invite them out, talk to them either as parents or as friends as to the importance of person to person connections. Yeah. And but for, for folks who are, let's say, a parent um, who's trying to get their kid up off the couch and away from the video games, what what advice do you give do you give them uh, to, yeah. to try to get try to force them away from sort of this digital companionship that they have to what's really going to help bring them enjoyment and fulfillment and that is and that is the way that we're supposed to be and that is that is that 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 personal connection. Yeah. Um, give them things to do. I mean, certainly we're not saying just because these young men are staying at home that they've become so isolated that they don't want to talk to other people. So certainly we can invite them to our homes to make sure that they help us with some tasks, doing some chores, giving them some things to do outdoors. And of course, inviting them as much as possible to social events and maybe insisting a little bit more that they be there. But Tom, it's also important to determine if they are 
clinically depressed or they have some major anxieties that we also get them some help because those social phobias may also be keeping them from getting out there and meeting other people and dating. Do you think that um, that the online dating apps, uh, do you think that that's something that's helpful? They definitely have gotten a lot more uh, a, a lot more popular over the last a couple of years, but it doesn't necessarily seem to be changing these numbers. Again, a great point, because what we're seeing is when they go on a lot of these uh, dating apps, they may be swiping left or right or whatever the case may be. I don't know. I've never used one of those things. I've been married my whole life. But I guess the bottom line is that they are pondering much more and swiping a lot more, but never making a decision on actually getting together with someone and getting out there and meeting folks. Yeah, no, it's very, th this is real, this is a real problem. It has a problem for replenishing our population yes. um, and it certainly has an impact on mental illness and and the rise in clinical depression so well, you know it's very important particularly for young men be encouraged to get out there to join things to do things with other that's people right. um, and then from there build other relationships Tom, America, that's a great point yeah. because it goes beyond the dating what does that it, really mean exactly exactly friendships are really important reignite yes. those friendships all right America's psychologist dr. Jeffrey Gardier thank you very much we appreciate your insights, sir. Always a pleasure. Thank you.